Hey, Radiant family. It's Holy Monday. Um, I wanted to read um, from Mark chapter 11 a couple things that, that I think will um, really stand out from something that will be quite familiar to, to a lot of you. And this is Mark 11. I'm going to read verses 15 through 19. This is um, when Jesus cleanses the, temp the temple. So he's, he's the triumphal entry has happened. Um, and and there's, there's different variations in the different Gospels, but, but in Mark, they've, they've, they've come all the way from the Mount of Olives into the, through the triumphal, triumphal entry, and then they've, they've gone to, to rest, and now Jesus comes back into Jerusalem to cleanse the temple. And it says this, And they, they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple, and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers? And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished by his teaching. And when evening came, they went out of the city. So again, just, just picture Jesus. He's, he's come in, like kind of really on a red carpet. Like it's the palm branches in the stories. It's the, 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 the they took their coats off in the stories, but really it's like for, a, for, our, for our culture, it'd be like the red carpet and, and, it, and it signified the king coming in, but he doesn't come in on a horse, a white horse that we picture in Revelation, this mighty battle king. He comes in on a donkey. Um, and he's declaring himself as the king. His disciples are declaring him as the king and the people are responding accordingly. And now he, he, here he is at the temple which, which represents the holy place of God and the religious leaders are now beginning to be up in arms. So, so think of it this way. Jesus enters the temple, and if you know anything about the temple, the first space that you would be in, which was the largest space to get to the rest of the temple, was called the Court of the Gentiles. So the Court of the Gentiles was literally meant to be where the non-Jews or the Gentiles, um, those outside the nation of Israel, could, could, could seek God, could pray to God, could look towards God. So God, God created a place in His holy place for even the Gentiles to come and seek Him. And, and, and Jesus comes into this place, the court of the Gentiles, where there should be non-Jewish people seeking the Lord, and it's filled with what many commentators think is thousands and thousands of people doing business operations, selling um, animals for sacrifice as part of the festival that everybody is in Jerusalem to celebrate. And then we see Jesus quotes Isaiah. And I actually wanted to read um, this from Isaiah because Jesus is making a profound point that I think sets our hearts well. Jesus quotes right here from Isaiah chapter 56. He says this, Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely separate me from his people. And let not the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree, for thus says the Lord to the eunuchs, who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples all people. So what, what, what Jesus is doing when he cleanses the temple is, 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 is upsetting as it probably was to him that, that God's house had been turned into a place of business. What really provoked the anger of Jesus is that, that the, the Jewish religious leaders had lost sight of God's covenant that was for all peoples from the beginning. It was always meant to be that God's covenant was, covenant was for all of the nations. And so Jesus literally goes and wrecks shop. He throws tables and turns them over in quoting these verses from Isaiah. Jesus shows his power by throwing out the need for animal sacrifice that the, and that the gospel message is a gospel message of repentance and hope to all the nations. And listen, it always was. 
It always was. God's covenant, God's salvation was for all the nations and Jesus wrecked shop accordingly. And, and you know, if Jesus was trying to make allies with the religious leaders in any form or fashion, this drew a line in the sand right here. So he's heading into and towards the cross very aggressively now by drawing this line in the sand. So here's what we have to do with Christ. And, and that's what everyone would be forced to do in this moment. They had seen him do his miracles. They had heard him preach. They had seen the many wonderful things that he had done all over the countryside. His disciples, the number of his disciples was growing. The line in the sand is this. Jesus is either who he says he is and all of his claims are true, or he's a lunatic and he's a false teacher and must be stopped. And so you see this on Holy Monday. Jesus comes in, he wrecks shop because he's proclaiming that he's ending animal sacrifices and not for a nation, for all the nations, for those who would call on the name of Jesus. And you gotta do something with this. This either hardens your heart or sets you free in the glories of Jesus Christ. So as you press in this day and as you look towards the cross, um, at Holy Monday in particular, the triumphal entry has happened and Jesus has drawn a line in the sand where do you find yourself on either line of that sand?